Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here. I should say good morning, really, for the it's, ideally it's an afternoon video for US markets. Just looking into uh, the potential positioning, uh, technically, fundamentally, for US markets for the afternoon's trading session, given the fact that we are nearly at an important juncture now on US markets and whether it's make or break. Okay, and that certainly does have a, have an effect on European markets as well. Uh, in terms of where if US markets do break out, then your EU markets follow. If they fail, then obviously EU markets will follow as well. Be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals and Market Updates at uh, the uh, w.tradesignal.com. Okay, and uh, you can certainly download this app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's try and decipher uh, in terms of the uh, situation in US markets. So right now, we have the uh, situation with regards to the Fed hiking or not hiking. Okay, to hike or not to hike. Okay, and that obviously is, uh, is, is, is switching the bias in the US markets. Okay, and it's, it's certainly, um, it really is embedded in the uh, in the ethos or the philosophy of uh, trading the US markets right now. So if there's any hint that the Fed is going to uh, potentially uh, abstain and pause, equity markets rip higher. If, if it's to the contrary, then equity markets start to move lower. And obviously oil plays a big part in that as well. Generally commodities, okay. And obviously economic data has an importance as well. Okay, so... Um, U.S. data certainly has started to weaken post NFP, and therefore the uh, the actual uh, uh, belief in that the Fed is going to raise rates certainly is being challenged. Okay, to say the least. Now we did get U.S. job uh, job opening certainly coming in stronger yesterday. So again, uh, switching the potential bias and Mr. Lacker as well with his hawkish rhetoric. Okay, so again, it's going to be interesting. Okay, it's going to be interesting how the markets respond. So let's try and break down the uh, S&P and let's see exactly where the S&P 500 is and then we will work our way from there. So let's start with the S&P. Let's see where the uh, S&P 500 is positioned. Okay, so let's bring up the S&P first and foremost. Here we go. Okay, so let's go to the daily chart here. Okay, so I did highlight the fact that we had this potential H&S formation. Okay, now that certainly is being questioned given the fact that we have started to rise now and retest the previous highs. I was looking for a potential HS or so right shoulder, then obviously the market's flushing lower. That hasn't transpired, unfortunately. Let's go to the 60 minute chart, the SP 500. We have an unfilled gap remaining below at 2170. We're currently trading at 2190 now, okay? So currently 2189, 2190. And then we have that resistance key above at 2193. Do we surpass 2193? I think not. I'm not expecting that to happen. Okay. I, I, it's very hard for me to envisage that right now, especially with an unfilled gap below at 2170. Okay. And also, obviously, the fact that uh, Mr. Allen certainly has been singing the hawkish song, even though the economic data is, uh, is certainly going against us. So, again, um, there are other factors or variables at play. I mean, we've had the latest comments from Russia now, potentially talking down a potential oil output freeze as well. And the Iranians certainly flip-flopping on the uh, potential output freeze. So, again, those are things that we certainly need to uh, understand. Obviously, the uh, situation with Mr. Draghi as well. If Draghi attempts to uh, to enact QE, then it will send the US dollar higher as well. And if the US dollar obviously is moving higher, then the US market certainly will come under pressure. So, uh, a lot of things that need to be taken into consideration also with regards to the BOJ. If they attempt to... Uh, talk down their currency usd jpy will go higher thereby sending the dollar higher so you have two central banks versus the fed okay and if that situation does transpire then you are seeing a stronger dollar which obviously hurts exports and, and hurts jobs and hurts growth okay and that obviously will send the you the uh, s p 500 lower as well so again a lot of headwinds a lot of headwinds for the u.s markets and uh, we'll soon see whether or not that's the uh, that's what actually transpires and materializes given the fact that we are in this light volume distorted page so the price action of the last six weeks really needs to be questioned really needs to be questioned okay so again let's just uh, consider that so let's go to the uh, daily chart again like i said s p 500 looking for this lower high it's all about this potential lower high so again all eyes on this potential lower high and you do have resistance at 2188, 2187, and certainly expecting that to hold given the fact that Asian markets were weaker overnight. Okay, going over to the 10 minute chart, the SP, you had a mini HS formation yesterday, it certainly played out and then reversed. Okay, so for now, you have this potential double top at 2187, expecting that to hold. Okay, and again, if we can put in this lower high, then all eyes on the potential gap fill below at 2170, and I think that's really the target, the gap that we are going to be targeting. 
that's just my understanding I'm certainly looking for that gap to close first before we even attempt to make any new highs so we'll keep an eye on that gap below okay for the S&P 500 now let's just bring up the uh, S uh, the Russell now as well because the Russell as we all know always uh, is uh, a front runner for the uh, the actual S&P 500 now the Russell itself is coming into resistance here okay Russell coming into resistance so you have this diagonal trend line uh, certainly is into resistance and therefore looking for a reversal a 60 minute chart let's just bring this up here okay 60 minute chart you certainly have pushed to new highs yesterday late in the session okay and whether or not that can be sustained that's the question okay again like i said the unfilled gap at 123 certainly um, is is in focus okay All eyes on that potential gap, okay? We'll see exactly how the market responds in terms of that gap, okay? Uh, from my understanding, gaps that are left open certainly not very healthy, okay? And certainly uh, make uh, are for an argument that certainly needs to close. So again, watch out for that, okay? So Im important, very, very important. Okay, dokey. So going over to the 10-minute chart, certainly new highs. So you have to respect that to a large extent, okay? But whether or not those larger high new highs can be sustained, that's the question. Especially given the fact that the daily chart now is into diagonal trend line resistance. Okay, we are into uncharted territory to a large extent recently. Let's go back historically. Okay, historically, it does state that you do have a gap at 127. Okay, well, what's the catalyst to propel us high? I mean, we have the Asian markets at lower overnight overall, Shanghai flat, Nikkei weak. Okay, even though we've had imports up 1.5%, will that be the catalyst? I mean, that's the question. Will that be the catalyst? But then the counter argument is that you are, you no longer will get any. Uh, any additional stimulus from China, which generally is considered bearish, given the fact that this market is uh, is fixated and, and, and trades uh, the hopium trade on QE. So, again, that's something to, to consider as well. So, Russell, whether or not it can stall here or make new highs, if it makes new highs, then the S&P will follow. Okay, and the EU markets will follow as well. If it stalls, how it starts to reverse then you uh, certainly will see a stalling in the EU market. So again, Mr. Draghi is going to have an important say with regards to that. Now bringing up the chart, the VIX as well, the VIX really has been crushed constantly. As you can see here, new lows on the VIX. Okay, so certainly new lows on the VIX, no real signs of stabilization either on the VIX, constantly selling off, no real conviction to reverse. So again, that certainly paints an interesting picture as well. So all hinges on Draghi, okay? So the Russell itself on the S&P 500, like I mentioned, 2190 or 2193 really is a key air zone. If we break above that, then obviously the bulls are in control. If the Russell starts to break higher, then the S&P will as well. Okay, we have had oil back up to $46 this morning. So again, that certainly has helped sentiment and sent yeah, EU markets higher, especially the, the FTSE 100. Okay, and whether or not, again, like I said, that can be sustained, that's the question. Let's go over to the Dow Jones now. Okay, it's a Dow Jones daily chart, still making a lower high, so no real conviction there to push higher. 60-minute chart at the moment, you're still struggling at resistance. No real breakthrough on resistance yet for the, uh, the actual Dow. So again, take that into consideration as well. Let's just connect the highs together here. Pivot high to pivot high, so that there's your first potential resistance line. So you certainly have a double whammy of resistance here. So looking for two areas or two zones of resistance for the Dow on the 60-minute chart, and therefore indicating bearish. 10-minute chart of the uh, the actual uh, U.S. Dow, you obviously have resistance in this zone, and looking for that potential resistance to hold. Connecting the pivot highs together, you certainly have resistance here. Looking at a potential bear flag scenario here. Okay, so certainly looking to uh, break down. So you certainly have this uh, symmetrical wedge type pattern brewing as well. Uh, with the Dow, given the unfilled gap below, bias would certainly be uh, towards the downside. That's my understanding. So certainly looking for the bias to be down, looking to close that gap at 18,420. So certainly look for look for risk aversion there. Okay, certainly look for risk aversion there. Okay, so let's bring up the. Uh, Let's bring up the Dow Transportation now, Dow Transport, so let's just uh, cross verify. Okay, so Dow Transportation, let's start with the daily chart. Dow Transportation daily chart, you are coming into resistance in the Dow Transports. Okay, so you certainly have horizontal resistance here. If you push higher, then another key zone. So again, looking for exhaustion or a potential reversal here. 
So certainly looking for weakness from my understanding on the uh, on the actual Dow transports in a daily chart. 60 minute chart certainly have thrusted higher. Impressive thrust yesterday. Uh, again, you have horizontal resistance in this zone. So Dow certainly is indicating resistance. Bring up the Nasdaq now. Let's just go to the daily chart first and foremost. Okay, so daily chart triple top resistance. So indicating a reversal, indicating a potential uh, top. 60 minute chart, you certainly have uh, the uh, support and uh, resistance. Well, certainly resistance, that's a uh, 48. Just confirm this 4836. Okay, so 4836. Looking at that potential resistance zone. Okay, and looking to potentially break down. Okay, 10 minute chart, again, you have this HS formation. Uh, certainly has failed for now. You've broken out this rising contracting type wedge pattern. And again, it's all about double top resistance at 4838. So, Again, capped at 4838. Capped at 4838. Important to know. So the Nasdaq certainly has turbulence. Let's cross verify that with its pairs now. Let's bring up the semicons and the biotechs. Whilst we're here, we can look at emerging markets as well. So you have emerging markets weekly here, emerging markets daily. So daily certainly um, pushed higher as well. So it has been very impressive on, on emerging markets, but again, certainly overstretched. Certainly bear that in mind. Okay, so looking for for the biotechs. Bear with me. There we go, here's a biotech. Okay, so daily chart, the biotech certainly has bounced off 200 MA and gap fill. Okay, but still remains under resistance given Mrs. Hillary Clinton's potential uh, grilling of the uh, the sector. Uh, and uh, I think there's one fraudulent event as well by a Therana. So again, certainly interesting in terms of pricing. Pressure will certainly remain on these um, on the biotechs and therefore will obviously force the force the force of Nasdaq and uh, lower. So again, keep that in mind. We have a close the gap below. So again, all eyes in there. Just bringing up the uh, semiconductors now. Here we go. Okay, Vanex. So daily chart of the uh, semicon certainly putting a bearish engulfing day yesterday. So again, indicating bearishness. You still certainly have your top on the uh, on the semicons as well. Looking at potential triple top there, and now looking for a lower high, uh, looking for a lower low thereafter. So again, certainly indicating weak weakness from my understanding, from my perspective. So. Certainly looking for downside price action. Okay, so semicons, biotech certainly exhausted. Nasdaq exhausted as well. That is triple top. If we do even break higher, it's going to be interesting to see how the biotechs and the semicons perform, and then we'll see. I'll get a good gauge on where where the actual market is going now. Whilst we're on technology, let's just quickly look at Apple stock. Uh, Apple stock daily, given the yesterday's uh, potential uh, conference of iPhone seven. From my understanding, nothing new, nothing special, nothing that will really reinvigorate sales. So again, Apple really remains uh, vulnerable. And given the fact that Apple's a, a very heavily weighted stock on the index, you are looking at weakness. Uh, Facebook as well, certainly exhausted, from my understanding. Certainly exhausted yesterday. Certainly, the price action certainly looked like it was being exhausted. Certainly looked weak. Not, uh, not certainly anything of any conviction. Okay, and Alphabet as well, certainly looks weak. So. Again, US market certainly stalling here, my understanding, looking for weakness and looking for a move lower, folks, especially um, with regards to the VIX, given the fact that it's been severely oversold and uh, an oversold bounce is due. OK, on that note, bias remains bearish, provided we remain below the 2193 in the S&P and 4838 on the US markets. If you break above that, then get ready for a short squeeze. OK, folks. Uh, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of the 25% uh, bonus. Goodbye.